Well, New Yorker columnist Ken Aletta is considered the dean of America's media writers. He has written numerous books on the information age, five of which have been national bestsellers. His most recent work is Googled, The Ends of the World as We Know It. Not a really bold statement there. Ken Aletta joins us now to talk about the challenges uh, facing the Internet powerhouse. And Ken, great to have you here in the studio Thank with you. us. Um, okay, and in your book, you know, when I was reading through it, I mean, you know, the, the gist of the, I don't want to over, oversimplify, but essentially, you know, Google revolutionizing the way we're basically interacting in this world, right? But also very disruptive of traditional media. So as we stand now, we've got the iPad, we've got um, you know, people talking about you know, doing most of their lives on smartphones. Um, how much of that is gonna be touched by Google? Oh, Google, uh, they expect by the end of the year there will be five billion uh, mobile phones in the world. Google's Android is actually, its operating system for those smartphones is actually outselling the, the iPhone now. Mm. So, because they, they make it available to any phone right. Company, whereas Apple is is in now it's AT and T just alone in the U S. Right, although that's going to change that, very soon. That will change, but it, they're doing it around the world. They tend to do one company at a time. SoftBank in 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 Japan, for instance, right. and Google is is making it universally available. So they are a huge player in the in the mobile phone market, which is actually going to sell. They're going to more mobile phones will be sold this year than computers. Right. Exactly. Well, that's and that's actually put, puts that in perspective because uh, you know for so long it's just been seen as this sort of one function um, device, and then suddenly it's become this huge like multi-use platform. Um, now everybody has essentially, in one way or another, been Googled. Right. We've all been affected in some way, and I'm just curious to know from your point of view. You know, having started off as a writer, who or you know you are a writer who started off writing for print, essentially for paper. Right. Now what you're seeing is your books are now not only in print in bookstores, but you're seeing it on the Kindle, you're seeing it on the iPad, I read it on the iPad. How does that affect an author like you? Well, it, 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 it potentially affects you. I love that. I love the fact that if I have a book that I published 25 years ago and it's out of print, suddenly Google, by digitizing all books ever published, brings it back into print so people might have access to that book if they wished it. I love that. I love the fact that people can read me on many different platforms. The worry you have is, this is how we're in my living. Uh, and, and I want to be sure I'm paid for it and people are not pirating my book or, or people are paying me a, a fair price for it. And, and so I can continue to write books. I had a very fascinating discussion with Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google. The second interview I did with him, he came in he said, Ken, why don't you publish your book for free on the internet? Mm. You get a lot more readers. I said, maybe you're right. I said, but who's going to pay me? And who's going to pay for my travel out here I don't and know my hotel? I don't know so. if you need help with readers, but, you know, <laughs> but, but that's a valid point, though. Um, and given that, though, I mean, can, is that trend, I mean, that trend seems to be in place, though. I mean, those margins for content are coming in narrower and narrower. Yeah, and then the worry you have is as they get narrower and as publishers go out of business, will they still pay in advance for an author to write a book, an unknown author to write a book, not a very large advance, but a book that is actually very important to the culture? Will those books continue to be published? Will the New York Times and other newspapers be able to send teams of reporters overseas? Will you still have investigative reporting? If news becomes a commodity and it's undifferentiated, it doesn't matter where you get it because it's all for free, then that undermines potentially good journalism. But, but is there really, I mean, I hear that quite a bit, news becoming a, a commodity, but there's always appetite for quality content. Is there not? There is, and one hopes that remains true, but on the other hand, if you continue to lose your readers and your advertisers, as newspapers have done, at what point is it not profitable for you to continue to spend, say, $5 million a year on a team in Afghanistan? Right, right. And that's what news organizations are facing uh, all over the world, right. uh, like you said. Just quickly, um, Sergey Brin and Larry Page to Mark Zuckerberg, big difference? <laughs> Well, they're, they're, all, they're all engineers, and, okay. and they are not people that you would have a relaxed evening socializing with, but they're brilliant. Okay. All right. Ken, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Ken Aletta, the author of Google Just Out in Paperback.